Let's jump in. Myth number one. Private credit is basically a zero-sum game. You know, non-bank lenders versus banks fighting over the same pie. That's the common perception. Direct competition. But the article suggests it's, well, more complex. It's definitely more complex. Often symbiotic, actually. There is competition. Banks are deeply involved. How so? Well, get this. About half the money non-bank lenders use for things like acquisitions, it actually comes from banks through fund finance. Wait, half. So banks are funding their supposed competitors. In a way, yes. They provide that capital. They offer cheaper funding lines to certain non-bank lenders. They give leverage to private credit funds. It's quite intertwined. Okay, so what's the theory there? Why would banks do that? It helps banks manage risk. They can offload some exposure, handle their capital requirements more easily. Ah, okay. Regulatory capital, maybe? Could be part of it. And for the private lenders, it means, you know, cheaper funding, which helps their returns and maybe lets them offer better terms. So it's not quite David versus Goliath. But is there any direct competition or is that just wrong? Oh, there's definitely competition. The article points to the middle market that think borrowers with, say, under $75 million in EBITDA. Right. There, it's more head to head sometimes. But even then, you've got bank consolidation regulations. Banks aren't always set up to hold all that specific risk anymore. So what's the ideal scenario then, according to this view? The article paints a picture where private lenders, maybe with more stable locked up capital, take on slightly different or incremental risks. And banks, using their low cost of funds, lend to perhaps lower risk borrowers or deals with a lot of protective capital underneath them. Sort of a division of labor. Specialization, really, not just conflict. Exactly. 